We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Hello, and we are live. Hey, Brainy, how you doing? Uh, not too bad, yourself? Not bad. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We are here to uh, host and moderate a debate between newcomer um, BM Furball and um, Lemonbird. It was going to be Flat Out Hero, but unfortunately, for some reason, He's not available, and if you look at the recent video on his channel, Summit's happened, because I don't think he put that up. What do you reckon, Brainy? Um, I didn't actually get a chance to see what had occurred, so um, this was news to me, but obviously I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I don't know why, his um, the most recent video he put up was him admitting that he sucks black penis. <laughs> um, which is obviously not, either he's had his phone stolen or someone's hacked his account or something. It could um, still be true, but that doesn't mean that that was him posting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this debate is between BM Furball and Lemonbird. Uh, how are you doing, guys? I'm doing good. How are you? Not bad. Um, thanks for joining us again, Lemonbird, on short notice. <clears throat> how are you doing, Furball? Doing pretty good. All right. Uh, looking forward to... We've not really moderated and hosted a debate like this before, so um, we're going to keep it as informal as possible. Um Brainy and I, uh, you know, are cut in if we feel like the conversation isn't going anywhere or, um, you know, if it's getting too rowdy or anything. But um, Brainy and I will kind of sit back and let you guys just, just get at it, really. Um, any thoughts, Brainy, about what's going to happen? Well, um, not really. I mean, I was interested to see flat out, but I'm also interested to hear Lemonbird present his uh, opinion on things. Obviously, we've had it back and forth a few times in the Discord, so it'll be fun to hear. I mean, it'll be fun to hear his argument. Yeah. So how do you guys want to do it? Do you want to just give a wee intro for um, each other uh, first? Um, just five minutes, talk about why you're here and why you believe the Earth is the shape that it is. Sure. Uh, do you want to go first, Lemonbird? Uh, sure. Um, it looks flat. Um, I'm here to learn what the other side um, has to explain different phenomena that appear flat. Um, and I'm interested to see what develops. Okay. Um, is there any particular reasons why you think that it's flat? Uh, in the last debate, we went over um, the lack of air pressure unless uh, gravity exists as a real force. Um, without its invocation, there would be no um, stratification and no air pressure without an enclosed uh, system with a firmament over it. Um, so there's that. There's the optical phenomena like the sun dogs, which appear to uh, be a reflection off of a curved glass surface of the sun. And um, there's also the laser tests, which appear to um, look like uh, flat land for miles with very little, if any, drop off. So there's that also. And there's also the infrared um, imaging, which appears uh, to show uh, up to a thousand miles of flat land. Okay. So those are the main things. All right, great. Um, and Furble, do you want to give a wee introduction to yourself? Yeah, um, I have been in the, uh, into the flat earth uh, debate or questioning for about three years now. Uh, first heard about it uh, after watching a podcast, and I just I couldn't wrap my head around it. I didn't understand how people could think that way, so I wanted to understand it better. Uh, so I started listening to podcasts, uh, mostly flat Earth side, Jaredism and Globebusters, um, and people of that sort. Uh, and I've been doing that, driving my wife crazy for the last two, three years. Uh, I am also active duty military. So I'm proof that the government is behind the anti-flat earth movement because there's a military force trying to take everyone down, apparently. You do realize that, that was, uh, that's for internal communications, right? We're not supposed to say that live. Oh, crap. I'm, I'm sorry. 
can, can, can we can we kill this? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll edit it later on. It'd be, it'd be fine. You're okay, okay because you didn't mention the shill check. Yeah, yeah, we definitely didn't mention the shill check. Okay. Um, I created an account or a, a, a channel of my own about two months ago because rather than annoy my wife at home just watching YouTube videos in bed, um, uh, I'm actually in South Korea right now. I'm here for a year by myself. So now that I'm alone and I've got nothing else to do, uh, I decided to start up a, a YouTube channel and uh, I've been going for about two months now and all my videos, they're... My goal is not to bash uh, flat earthers. It's not to because there's plenty of videos that do that, and Craig, you do it amazingly. <laughs> Thank um, you. My goal was to take observations that I saw every day that you might not think about, that might be just everyday observations that I think lend credence to a globe Earth, and that's what most of my videos are about. Something you've never thought of before that leans towards globe rather than flat. Fair enough. Um, just before we get going, um, I want to say a, a massive thanks to Red's Rhetoric for letting us use his platform for this debate. Um, you guys are obviously probably all aware of what's happened to me, and I just want to say that the support you guys have given me has been phenomenal. Um, and if anything, it's just going to make me stronger as as a YouTuber. Um, so yeah, thanks to everyone, and a massive thanks to Red's Rhetoric. Um, Brainy, anything you want to say before we get going? Uh, you keep just jumping on me this i'm new to all this i don't even know what to say um well you know i'm really privileged feeling very privileged to have been invited to help moderate this um this is kind of my first time moderating so I, I mean i'll jump in when i feel i need to but otherwise i might hang back a little bit and uh let obviously they got to do their debating we're not in the debate so yeah, um, yeah i mean I'm, I'm ready to learn and I, I hope to do more of this in the future but this is kind of new for me so i'm just getting my feet wet awesome my beaver wet Get my beaver wet. Getting your beaver wet. Perfect. And congratulations on the thousand subs, Brainy. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. And uh, I don't know if anybody watched my latest video that just came out, which is kind of just a rehash of the 5K special because I had this vacation. But I'm currently on vacation. And when I get back, uh, I'll be working on my 1K wet beaver special, as I had promised. Every right, well, I'll make sure that Brainy's channel is in the description uh, and everything. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe to him because he's absolutely hilarious. And it's great to have um, this wave of new debunkers on the scene that are really, really funny. But I think at this point, we'll just hand it over to you two guys. Um, you just want to have a back and forward, ask each other questions, do what you need to. Off we go. Yeah. Um, if preferable, I'd like to stick on single topics as we move along, because a lot of these debates can go on tangents and not address the original question at hand. So that, that's the only thing that I request. Um, and that I would also request that uh, Lemon Bird if I assert something that I have personally done, I would request that you accept that that is factual. I'm not going to make up. Um, I'm not going to produce a two-hour video that I shot two months ago right here to prove to you that I saw one thing. Is that acceptable? Uh, fair enough. Okay. What would you like to go over as your first topic? Um, I guess uh, the first thing I was talking about, uh, the presence of... Um a dome firmament covering the system and making an enclosed system um, being necessary um, to have pressurization and stratif uh, stratification of the air layers without um, invoking gravity. Could you, would you mind describing to me what your vision of this firmament is, just so I can properly understand where you're coming from? Solid, crystalline glass. Um, or it could be some sort of energy electromagnetic barrier, but I think it's probably solid. Do you have an idea of where that barrier is, like around the Earth, where it's at? I think they say that it's about 100 miles up, give or take. What about around the edge of the Earth? Like if we were, if you were able to drive in one direction far enough and find the dome, where would that occur? Uh, from the center, I think you'd have to go ten to 15,000 miles um, from the center. So your original, so th for this topic, just to make sure I understand it properly, you're saying that to have a pressure gradient system on the Earth as we do, that would require a dome. Uh, yes, to keep the environment enclosed. But if it was not, if it was enclosed like that, if there was a dome, wouldn't it be a constant pressure system throughout the entire 
dome? What, what causes the lower part of the dome to be at a greater pressure than the upper part of the dome? Uh, there may be uh, multiple phenomena going on at the bottom of the uh, air column. You have living organisms that are transpiring, breathing, um, you know, in and out, um, having biological processes at the bottom. There is also electrical activity as you go up in the atmosphere, which may complicate things further. And also, um, I guess you're talking about a universal pressure distribution. That would only happen if the uh, container was at saturation. Uh, it may not be at saturation. There may be several cycles going on that um, uh, are in equilibrium, yes, but may not be in this uh, uh, super saturation where there'd be this pressure, um, you know, bursting on the um, outside of the container, on the inside of the container universally throughout all parts. And also you have multiple gases within this column and the gases may behave differently and stratify differently and may lead to a different uh, pressure differential um, throughout the columns. Would this, if we were to accept that gravity was real, wouldn't we see the exact same thing on a ball though? You wouldn't necessarily require to have a dome to keep it enclosed because that gradient system just keeps getting less and less and less as the heavier gases are at the bottom. Well, if um, gravity is um, strong enough to hold the gases to the ball, then wouldn't we see the land just having a smooth profile throughout the globe? How would there be, you know, mountains or, or features on the land at all if gravity is what we think it is? Wouldn't it, uh, gravity just fit out as a smooth ball? In uh, the general scheme of things, the Earth from above is actually viewed as almost as smooth as a billiard ball in the size that it is. So your, your argument is kind of correct. There are minor variations on the surface. It's just the fact that we are so small and we're standing on it that we notice it. But from an astronomical perspective, the Earth is smooth. Verbal? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Lemonbird, you there? Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Do you want to uh, respond uh, to Another that? question that I've got, um, since uh, I'll let you think on that for a second, but another uh, question I've got that I've never gotten an answer for is that if it's buoyancy and density that cause heavier things to go down and lighter things to go up, and we are in an enclosed system that prevents things from escaping, lighter things should go up. That's why helium balloons go up. That's why, you know, things fall down at different rates is because they're heavier. But since the Industrial Revolution, we have been liberating tons and tons and tons of helium from the Earth, from other elements in the Earth. And we are using it kind of willy-nilly for balloons and ridiculous things like that that scientists someday are going to get really mad about because we're going to run out of helium. But with as much helium that humans have released into this enclosed dome over the last two, three hundred years, shouldn't there be a thick layer of helium, of solid helium, at the top of that dome because it has risen up higher? Um, I guess that would be the case, yes, but um, electrical um, potential increases as you go up in the atmosphere. This, these um, atoms may be electrically fixed and bonded and fall back down in another form. I mean, we have ozone formation already in the current model, flat or round already. So maybe there's some sort of helium formation in the deuterium, tritium, uh, water, who knows? Are, are you saying that the helium itself transforms into something else? Or are you saying that the helium binds to something else heavier and comes down? Um, I guess I'd say it transforms into something else. Well, the... The only thing that helium could transform into would be hydrogen, which is yep. even lighter. That's because true. elements elements degrade down, they don't degrade up. So unless a heavier element collided with that helium and made that heavier element bigger, the only thing that can happen to helium would it could become ionized if the, the electrons are stripped off, but it can't grow in size because helium is if I remember right, I'm not the smartest that science. I think helium is two. Somebody correct me. Yeah. Helium's the second light yeah. element. Helium well, is two. So if it were yeah. to degrade, it would degrade into one, which is hydrogen, which is even lighter. 
So that would continue going up. And adding electrons and adding things like that don't increase the mass of any element enough to make them fall. <clears throat> it just changes their electrical charge. Well, in that case, I'd have to look into that further. I'd have to invite some woo theory as to water formation or, you know, whatever by another mechanism. There's um, other um, conspiracy elements out there saying that water is not what we thought it was and that water forms by another process other than um, hydrogen and oxygen coming together because the atomic masses that you get uh, when you add hydrogen and oxygen together um, by certain volumes, you, get, uh, you don't get the same volume of, of water that comes out of the equation. So there are people that say that water formation is not what we think it is by hydrogen and oxygen. Maybe this hydrogen is, is uh, you know, going through some other process and coming down as water or something else. If you want to, you know, speculate like that, but I don't know. But isn't that well, speculation not... right there? I mean, what you said. Sorry, yeah. I had to say that. Yeah. Brainy, do you want to just comment okay. in the chat so Red can make you moderator in the uh, live chat? Sure. Um. Have you actually, because you mentioned that uh, water transforming and things of that nature that you don't when you combine them you don't get the same weights out have you personally looked at those those actual equations because um, yes or no have you looked at those equation on paper um but um i'm uh, talking about the youtube videos that say when you put the atomic masses in the weights of this much water with this i mean this much hydrogen with this much ox oxygen the masses do not equal out there's the energy input input that's lost in the yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that, Brady, is that the input and output masses, yes, you're absolutely correct. If you take two masses and you combine them, the input and output masses are not the same because there's energy lost through uh, radiation. There's energy lost through heat. There's energy lost through the combination. So the masses are different, yes, but the actual energy, if you were to break it down to the energy level, how much energy is in this and how much energy is in that, smash, now I've only got this much. The rest of that energy got out somewhere, and it is accounted for. <clears throat> I've just, I'll jump in since there's dead air. I mean, remember, remember, <laughs> Lemon, that you can't, you can't. The the law of conservation of mass says you can't create or destroy energy. So when when those equations happen, there's there's always energy transfer. So you have to account you have to count for energy loss and gain. And there's there's other parts. Of Fair enough. Okay. Um, since, do, do you, if you want to talk about this, or mind if I move on to a different topic for a little bit? Sounds good to me. Okay. So I think we're kind of at a, a dead spot on here with speculation and science. Um, you'd mentioned what you think the firmament is. Um, I'm a, I'm not a believer in the firmament, obviously, but I'm also a, a strong proponent of space and astronomy, and I've done a lot of research into that. I've got telescopes of my own. I've taken pictures of the sky, and things that are out there outside what you would call the firmament and as of yet from from my observations i don't see anything that would tell me that what i'm seeing in space isn't real that those are not physical objects out there because i've i've observed planets i've observed uh i've observed moons crossing in front of jupiter uh, i've observed a supernova in a distant galaxy that was observed by other people so what is your explanation for astronomy before we go down this a little farther? Well, um, if they were covered by a firmament, then the stuff beyond um, probably can't be reached by us and has been probably embellished by NASA. Uh, when you look not, at their hey, bare eyes, Lennon, we are not talking about NASA. I am talking about me. Uh, well, uh, uh, fair enough. When you look with your own eyes, you see blobs of light up in the sky. You don't see... Uh, stuff that that's, looks like um, terrestrial that's not uh, true. rocks. That's not true. I have a telescope. I have seen Jupiter. I have seen its moons. Yeah. You can even see the lines on Jupiter with your own damn eyes. You can to, put a to telescope be fair, in and do it. I bought my daughter, uh, you know, it wasn't an expensive one, just a 70 pound telescope for Christmas. And, and we have looked at things in the sky that were clearly more than just blobs. I mean, 15, 15 years ago, I had a telescope that was $300 Canadian and it could lock onto the damn thing and track it through the sky so you didn't even have to follow it yourself. I mean, this is not new technology. Are you looking and, uh, at physical uh, features or deformations of the firmament? Okay, so you're saying, uh, fuck, not my debate. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. All right, yeah, let's, what let's do, step back and let the guys carry on. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I'm looking at things in space that I can describe, that I can take pictures of. And that somebody on the opposite side of the planet 
at the same time that can see the same objects can look at the exact same thing. And we can predict them. You can predict the rotation of Jupiter. You can predict when the, the great spot is going to cross in front of the planet. You can predict when the moons and everything are going to go around it. And you can even predict uh, um, shadows of moons on Jupiter. And I have seen those physically with my eyes. They're not blurs. They're not blobs. They're nothing else. And I know the videos you're talking about. And most of those people are trying to take pictures of stars with uh, the Nikon P900 or, uh, or the P1000. And I'll tell you, Lemonbird, that the focus at long distance on those cameras is shit. Mm. That's why you get blobs. When you well, actually have an optical device that can properly focus and you have it aligned properly, it's crystal clear what you're looking at. You're not looking at blobs. There are blobs in space. I'll give you that. But most of those blobs are astronomically farther than what we're talking about in regards to planets. So what would your explanation be for what I am observing when I look at Jupiter at night? Uh, basically... Um embellishments um, from um, that have influenced us from the mythology surrounding NASA. I hate to invoke that again. But the thing is, um, based off of the um, uh, artist renditions that seem highly stylized and don't quite seem to comport with what we see with our own eyes and our own telescopes, maybe uh, we're not being told about all that space actually is. But if I mean, you look... Much Sorry, if you look with a regular I, I, telescope, though, there's no, you still see the lines, you still see all that stuff. Nobody's artist. It. The only difference is you can't see color because there's the lack of light. Yeah, I mean, this this isn't our debate, so I don't want us to keep jumping in. But the, the question that I would ask here is, have you, Lemon Bird, got had a telescope and done these observations yourself? Uh, I had a, a low power telescope. Um, nothing real uh, fancy back when I was um, younger. But I didn't really see a whole lot. I saw some twinkles in the sky when I looked through the telescope myself. But um, that was it. Nothing high powered or anything like you that. Can, I have, I have very uh, high powered two telescopes of my own. Yeah, I've got two telescopes of my own. I actually have a 16 inch uh, Trust Dobsonian that was about $1,500. Uh, it's not smart. You've got to know where to point it. And it's huge. It's a beast to move around. Um, but I can see the cloud tops of Jupiter. I can see the moons of Jupiter. I can see definition of things. I'm, and this isn't influence from NASA. The first, uh, this is actually in one of my videos. The first time I pulled out my 16-inch dob and I was looking at Jupiter, I was, I'm looking at it. I, I have not prepped my mind with anything. Yes, I've seen what NASA has said, but I haven't done any research. What's happening on Jupiter today? I am just brought my new telescope out and I looked. And as I'm looking at Jupiter, I can see the disk of it, and I can see – I could barely see this, the, the, the storm because that's really tricky to see. But I saw a really bright spot right in the middle of Jupiter that didn't look like normal from images. And I saw a perfectly circular dark spot also on the cloud tops of Jupiter. And I had no idea. This was my first observation. And I looked at it for a half hour trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So I went, got my phone, and I actually downloaded an app that would show me what Jupiter's supposed to look like right now. And I, what it showed me was that one of the moons of Jupiter was physically in front of it. That was my bright spot. And a shadow of another moon was going across the cloud tops. That's what I was looking at. That is what I physically saw before any other source told me it should be there. How is that possible if that is not a physical object in space? Well, I mean, I'm just exploring other options as opposed to, you know, the Earth being this uh, rock that's, you know, hurtling through the uh, solar system. There may be bodies we're not talking about that, that right revolving now. over us. So you accept that it might be a physical body up there? I would say that it's a light. But there may be crystals up there. There's um, a scholarship uh, looking into uh, stars as crystals. Um, which would invite in, you know, the electric, you know, universe theory but that I'm a fan of. What did I observe? Uh, what did I observe? Uh, with Jupiter? I'd say a light. Yes, it, yes, it wasn't a light. a light because that's how you see things. That's how you yeah. see things. But what was it? It was probably, um, I guess I would go, you know, metaphysical and say that the stars up there are probably souls or angels or whatever. Um, and the planets are wandering stars. I don't know if they were alive, like they say in uh, Velikovsky's um, mud fossil theorem, 
that uh, says that the planets were actually physical beings that lived, you know, gave birth, had electrical activity and everything, and, and they were mythologized throughout history. I don't know if I'd, I'd go that far, but I guess I, I would invite in other possible definitions, electrical or whatever, for um, what's happening up in space. Um, but it appears that, you know, maybe uh, space isn't quite what we think it is. I mean, how do we even measure uh, distances to stars accurately? Um, Southern Protestant um, has a site where he has loads of flat earth theorems, um, southernprotestant.com slash flat earth.html. And he shows the uh, philosophical uh, problems with uh, a, a medium that is nothing that, but somehow we're trying to measure it off in space. You know, how do you um, measure it with a ruler if there's no solid uh, component in the space to, to judge your distances um, to begin with? And then on top of that, we're basing it off of a highly theoretical idea of what light is. Do we even fully understand what light is? I mean, we um, debunk the corpuscular theory of light as these particles, uh, the, these discrete particles, and we, we can't even quite decide if it's a wave or, or a particle yet. So how can we even be certain what we're observing or how light is behaving in the first place? How do we know it's not curving you know, in space behind this or uh, being refracted through space? How do we know how far it's going? I mean, even the idea that the redshift can give you, um, you know, some sort of uh, measure on how far the stars is, is in doubt because we see stuff that's redshifted that should be further away than the blue shift shifted stuff in front of the blue shifted stuff and vice versa. And so there's a lot of um, uh, gray area there as to what, the heck, if anything, is going on in space. Uh, uh, so I've got, I've got um, a button for uh, um, the, the, the but I feel like you've completely missed the question that was actually asked. Fribble, do you want to ask the question again and see if we can just get a direct answer? I think I answered as a light um, that was behind a dome deformation and uh, maybe uh, but what is the light? a solid object. What is the light then? And I think I also answered as possibly souls or living beings of some sort, spiritual or otherwise. Who knows? Evident. So, so magic. You're saying that's that's what I'm hearing is magic. Um, unless you're going to get past the dome, you I guess you'll have to take NASA's deceptive photos and um, a um. And we're not ADF talking about NASA. Like, uh, we're not talking uh, about ideology NASA. instead. So it's just uh, a okay. magic. Uh, Sorry again. I'll, I'll just have to button. Um, Fribble made it quite clear at the beginning about things like NASA and that. He's not talking about NASA's observations. He's talking about the observations that he has made himself. And also... But he'll filter his observations through probably what he's seen in the culture. NASA and no, otherwise, there, just there, like there I was, There was no filter. Lemonberg, there was no filter. The only filter was the lens in front of me. I had, I had an impression of what these should look like, but that's physically what it looked like. And you can take a child that has never heard of NASA, put them up to your telescope and they see the same thing you do. So if it's, if it's a soul, if it's a light, if it's something else like that, then we need magic explanations for it. The, the globe theory, the heliocentric theory, the theory that our body that we live on is a planet, one amongst several others that orbit our sun, fits observations. It completely fits observations. Absolutely fits observations. But no observation is separated from an ideology. You can't make an observation without having a basic ideology within so which So you're telling me that is So if you think everything is physical and material, you're going to struggle to find a materialistic causology for why we have this star over here, as opposed to other explanations. But once you have come to an explanation that fits your observations, shouldn't you generally accept that as the explanation until something else controverts it? Uh, up to a point. It depends on how circular your reasoning is. If you're like, this has to have some physical cause um, uh, uh, apart from the spirit or whatever, uh, and it has to be thus, and, and you make an observation that you know confirms your bias, it may be somewhat circular until, like you say, we find other evidence to the contrary. But I, I would agree with you, yes, up to a point, yeah. yes. So I think we can just accept that I believe that I observed a physical body in the sky and you believe magic. So let's move on. 
Um, well, you said magic. I have a problem with that. Magic is anything that's contrary to the will of God, using your will to 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 break. We're not uh, talking religion here. God's I'm talking about yeah, that's we're not doing religion. Magic. Guys, let's not talk we're not over. Religion, uh, gavel, gavel, it's gavel, true, gavel. It's true. Gavel, or not. If guys, if stop! Both, but please, both of you, please, no talking over each other. No one can hear what's being said. Fribble was trying to respond to your point. Let him finish what he's saying, and then you can respond to that lemon bird. Okay. So, go right. on, Fribble. It's it is magic because it is things that we completely can't explain, not things that are based on observations. It is. Well, it is, is, it is, is pure conjecture. Lemon bird, let him finish his point, please. This is pure conjecture. I can tell you the basis for what I believe my observations are without saying, well, maybe it's this. Well, I mean, unless we've been to these stars and you believe what NASA is saying, which I don't, then what's just conjecture, conjecture about these stars, you know, um, buttressed yet again by NASA mythology. NASA is at the, the, the helm of this with the control on the rockets the control mm -hmm. on the satellites, the control on the imaging software that filters down to us, and, and that's the mythology around which we wrap our ethos so you, and our so, observation. So imaging software. I, I want to bring up another thing. You mentioned NASA and their imaging software. This is uh, the full point of one of my videos. So you can't claim that NASA is behind all space imagery. They, You can say that they're behind the mythology or the you know what we think space is, but you can't claim they're behind everything. Because everybody, there's a, you know, there's thousands of telescopes out there. Um, five, six, seven years ago, uh, I there was a, a video podcast that I watched, and once a week they did a bunch of things, and once a week they did a weekly space hangout, a virtual star party. People who had telescopes set up in their backyard, connected to their personal computers, would take pictures of different things in the sky, while hundreds of people would do what we're doing today, and see what they're showing us. So these, this isn't NASA. These are regular people in their backyard. And they looked at an image of one particular galaxy that uh, I can't – I think it was M82. I don't remember. It wasn't Andromeda. Um, but they took a picture of that galaxy that day. I mean it had been taken two minutes before, posted on a screen, nothing special. Two days later, a university – was doing observations and they identified that a supernova had exploded in that galaxy. Made big publications, hit the news, there's a supernova. I went out in my backyard, I looked at that galaxy and I saw the little dot. The podcast or the, the, the series that I had been watching realized, oh crap, we looked at that two days before the news release. And they went back in the footage and the supernova is in their image before NASA had announced it. How is it not a physical, real thing? Yeah, I'm not saying that there isn't space beyond the dome. I'm just saying that we don't quite know what's up there, and, and a lot of it is supposition. That's my... Lemon, you, know, lemon you, know, you don't know what's up there. People who have actually and observed and acted NASA on the science. Either. So let's go to... I think we're, we're stuck on this one. Um... And, and I'm not. I don't want this to turn into a yelling match and people getting, you know, screaming at each other. Let's go to NASA for a second. Past the dome, then it's going to be, you know, um, uh, fake images and mythology, essentially. Based on what? You're just making assumptions. You keep going. Uh, back if there's a dome covering our world. How the hell do we get past it? But aren't, aren't like you saying making the right assumption? There? Sorry, sorry. Uh, aren't you making the assumption that there's a dome? Isn't that in uh, itself based an off assumption? The dog, air pressure. And the the uh, what looks like visible physical architecture up there. Yes, and I can fill a bottle with all kinds of different gases, and at the end of the day, the pressure on that bottle will be the same. They will stack, but it doesn't matter. The pressure will be the same in the bottle. So that that's it'd be a closed bottle. Yeah, that's your so, dome. Hey, let okay, anyway, right, to to yeah, let's go to something that is NASA. Not let's, let's talk about the space station for a second. Not what NASA says is up there. Because that, yes, that is filtered through NASA. Every image that comes down is filtered through NASA. You can observe it from the ground. I've seen it myself. I've taken pictures of it myself. I've observed it dozens and dozens of times. What do you think the object is that I'm looking at from the ground? Um, if it's not orbiting a round ball, it would be orbiting, orbiting over the flat plane. Uh, do you think you could have seen orbiting? the satellite? 
um, a, a holographic projected image? I mean, how conspiratorial do you want to go with that? What that's is what a satellite? That's what I'm asking. A, okay, a satellite is something that flat earth believers think that the satellites are because there are videos of people in Antarctica and other places launching things under weather balloons, which, by the way, Lemon Bird, I've launched two weather balloons so we can go there. Um, launching things that look satellite techish and they launch them up under a balloon. So clearly, since it was done once, that's what everything in the sky is. Well, I mean, uh, am I wrong? Uh, well, I mean, there's that. I mean, uh, NASA is like the biggest purchaser of. of uh, no, 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 no. So it looks like maybe I, that's what they're using, I, you know, uh, using it for. So what did I see from the ground? Now, what I saw, I have pictures. Excuse me. <laughs> well said. I can post them. I don't think that you're going to see him because you're on your phone. Can you see uh, the presentation at all? If I posted something, would you be able to see it? Well, you can screen share and he would be able to see it. If you want to screen share, I can just switch it over to that. Yeah. No me... porn. But Lemonbird, can you see the screen, yeah? Uh, I see the four icons for okay, right, okay. us. That's fine. Because I, I can switch okay. it to the full screen presentation. So do you want to go over to uh, screen share in the now, Fribble, and I'll switch it over to that? Yep. All right, just click yes, on the uh, uh, screen share icon, and okay. then there we go. On the presentation, make sure you window capture Discord. Oh, for the audio? Uh, no, 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 for the uh, video. Because he's going to be screen sharing to limit. Uh, he should be able to see just what's on screen there now. Can you see what I'm like, showing, Lemonbird? To screen share so we can see it within Discord. He's on mobile. Oh right. Oh, gotta do it. Dang it. Okay. Crap. Um. So Lemonbird, mm -hmm. uh, I'll show everybody else what I what I've got. Oh, not that. I have taken an image of the space station as it passes in front of the sun, and it looks exactly like what NASA says it looks like. It actually looks like a, a TIE fighter from um, from Star Wars. Sorry, Furball, that, uh, that's an image you've taken? Yep. That's incredible, yes, by I the way. Yes, I took this personally. That is absolutely amazing. And when I did this, I, I plotted it, I planned it. Everybody, if you have the capability of doing this, buy a solar filter for your camera. You don't need any specialized equipment. You just need to be able to have some kind of filter <laughs> on your camera. Go to the website, ISS Transit Finder. I think that's what it is. Put in your spot on the map. And it will tell you every transit within 200 kilometers over the next month. Some of them are solar, some of them are lunar. And you have to be there on the exact second. And my wife can testify to this because I drug her out there when I took this picture with the kids. And the hardest part is finding a clock on your phone that ticks seconds. Because it has to be, you know, at like, you know, 137 and 12.2 seconds is when it happens. And I set it up, hooked my cam my telescope uh, camera up to the telescope, mashed the button, and I got five images, that one and that one. I'm just posting two here. I got five total images of the space station passing in front of the sun. It looks like the space station. It is the exact shape of the space station. I haven't done it, but other people have taken pictures when other rockets are supposedly resupplying the space station. There's people that have taken images of the shuttle docked to the space station. It is a physical object that is passing in front of the sun. You'd mentioned holograms. Are you, would you say that you think this is a hologram being projected into the sky? Uh, there are various conspiratorial options, a drone, satellite, okay. or okay. holographic no, no, wait, wait. even let's, attachment let's go with to the drone. Let's, dome. Let's go with a drone for a second. Let's go one by one down these. If it could be a drone. I'll give you that. It could be a drone flying overhead. The problem is that this transit finder will show you every crossing. And remember that the space station is traveling at nearly 25,000 miles an hour. If you go so, by the math, if you no, go no, by no, 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 math, no, no. maybe it's a little bit closer. Actually, on the southern hemisphere, it would be farther. We can go there, too, because I've done the math on that. I did this a couple days ago, and I'll describe it to you since you probably can't see it. I this is I, the, um, I, I can see it in YouTube. Okay, so this is Transit Finder. And you can see that 
on the 8th of February, the times are all GMT. So at 20, 40, and 23 seconds, at this spot on the ground, the space station is going to pass in front of the sun, and it's going to last for 0.92 seconds. That's how short the transit is. So look at the time. This is the 8th of February, 2040, 28. Well, in Spain, at 2056.34, 16 minutes later, the same phenomenon happens. So that drone would have to cross the entire Atlantic from Brazil to Spain for this phenomenon to happen. Or there are thousands of drones flying over just for the purpose of faking transits. Hmm. So you, you you see my 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 point. It doesn't make sense. It it really doesn't make sense. This has to be if it's a physical object, if it's a satellite or if it's a drone, that object has to be moving at 25,000 miles an hour because whatever that object is in 16 minutes went from Brazil to Spain. And this transit finder is correct because I know dozens of other people who've done it. And it's not like some big conspiracy uh, agency is out there trying to figure out, okay, you know, Bob from Ohio is going to try and do a, a transit tomorrow at 9 a.m. We need the, the plane up there so he can take the picture. Mm. Now, if we want to go back to my images. So this is the first transit I did. This was at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I, I really wish I would have taken a screenshot of my transit finder for this transit. The transit on this one was about a second, and I got five pictures. And you can see how the little TIE fighter flies past the sun. The second time I did it was about 8 o'clock in the morning, and my wife wouldn't get out of bed for me, so I went on my own. <laughs> and it was only like two miles away from the house, so it's, uh, it wasn't too bad. But now if you imagine, the sun is on the horizon now. For the space station to physically be between me and the sun, the space station is actually physically farther away as well. Because directly overhead is the closest it can be to me. On the horizon, it's farther away from me. I didn't put this together because, you know, I'm a dumb human. And on the transit finder, it told me I had a four-second transit. Didn't do the math in my head. Didn't think about it. I just knew I was going to have four whole seconds of the space station transiting in front of the sun. Can you guess what the image looked like, Lemonbird? Uh, um, a satellite? What, no, what, what do you think the difference between this image I'm presenting now with a overhead one second transit and my second series on the horizon with a four second transit, what do you think the difference in the image I saw of the supposed space station was? It was bigger. What do you guys think? I'm talking about me? Yeah, yeah, what do you think? Uh, fight, what do you think? Oh, the <laughs> second one would have been bigger, right? No. I'll, I'll admit that I had been distracted for about one second there when you asked me the question. Because it's closer to the horizon, isn't it going to be uh, bigger or whatever? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I misunderstood the question myself. I apologize. The space station is physically farther away from you. Yeah, of course. That's sorry, it's further. Yeah. Had a four whole second trends. Can you see it in the image? It's that little guy right there. Yeah. At halfway up. And I got 15 pictures this time instead of five. Here's the second one, and it's down at the bottom. You can barely see it. It took four whole seconds to transit. I got 15 total images using the exact same setup, and the space station was eedy, 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 tiny because it's physically farther away from me. And that matches what you should observe. I just wasn't thinking about it before I went out and did it. Hmm. So the space station has to be what I'm observing. I'm not saying what's up there. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about what I'm observing has to be a physical thing that is moving at 25,000 miles an hour unless it is a hologram or a projection that you're going to need a lot more science behind to make that claim. Hmm. Fair enough. Um, would, 
Would you like it? What, what topic would you like to pick, Levin? Or I've, I've picked the last couple. Uh, oh, can I pick a topic? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lemon Bird, you've been talking about conspiracies. What do you think of anti vaxxers? Hey, pig, no. Pig, no. no. <laughs> Let, let's we not go there. Things. This is flat earth, yeah. The, what topic would you like to go to, Lemon Bird? Now all I can think about is anti vaxxers. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon Bird, you still there? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Fribble was asking you what, what particular topic on Flat Earth you would like to cover now. Uh, the fake uh, looking uh, holographic photos from NASA um, uh, where they're floating um, in space, quote unquote, with harnesses, um, holographic layering um, used to um, make them uh, look like they're handling objects that aren't there. Um, blow so dryer hair believe, tunnels. Do you believe that that holographic imaging or that that layering is that done live or is that all post? Uh, it can be done live as well. Yeah. Um, to clarify, I think what Lemon Bird's talking about here is um, augmented reality. Um, is, yeah. is what he, he he thinks that within whatever's being recorded, they are being directed to interact with three D objects within a virtual space. Do you have any basis to show us that augmented reality is actually that good? Um, just the YouTube videos, um, no, no, augmented no, reality, I'm not talking about, uh, talking about, space station. We're not talking about those because that's what you're trying to debunk. That's what you're trying to talk about. What I'm talking about is outside of that realm, do you have any examples of augmented reality in some other aspect of life that is real time and that is as good well, we as have what is being done on the space station. Uh, well, yeah, we have Hollywood um, bringing back the um, uh, digital um, Carrie Fisher That's after not her live. Live. A timely device, and it looks very convincing. There's That's a lot that they can do with these holograms. That is not live. We're talking but a lot. That shows the capability that they have live or not. Well, no, 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 no. That, and they spend takes... thousands of hours making a movie to do like ten minutes of scene. That's not the same as just filming something live and making it look like like fidelity. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, we also have. Um, well, we also have uh, the holographic images that are um, available um, with Project Blue Beam and with um, some of the holographs that you see That's even in um, uh, uh, China or, or Japan or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, the, so the holographic that, displays that they true. have are, uh, can be pretty convincing. You're explaining a conspiracy with a conspiracy. I'm not asking for you to explain a conspiracy to, with a conspiracy from another conspiracy because this isn't conspiracy. Well, you're section. assuming that the I technology want, is available and widespread. That may not be the case. A lot of time with the military, they give I'm us their old that. defunct technology 20 or 30 years after they've been using it. So that would be so expected. Do you have so do you – the military doesn't use augmented reality I'm in the military. I, why would the military need augmented reality like this? What I'm asking you is do you have any – that is not based on another conspiracy that someone, anyone can do live augmented reality realistic enough that it looks like what NASA claims is on the space station? I mean, in everyday life, the only thing are like those little holographic things. Um... That's not as good, though, Lemon Bird. That's not the same quality. That is crap. I, I've done my research on this as well, and I've looked you can at get the... Like your phone. I mean, you're, you're I think what Fort Furble's trying to say here is that the, the technology that we have available, for instance, you look you at Pokemon Go. Level, that's about it. Yeah. Pokemon Go is is kind of the pinnacle of our real time augmented reality technology that we have at the moment. You know, no one's going to deny that they're too. working on this stuff, but what you're saying exists doesn't. And I think Verbal is basically asking for you to provide proof that that kind of technology does exist. I think the that's non sequitur show recently actually just had an expert in that's worked on a lot of Hollywood movies, and he yeah. explained how impossible that. Yeah. Sorry, back to you guys. There was just there was just a video out a couple days ago. Um, the burden somebody back on me. So graphic, uh, we can go back to Mike. Lemon Bird, your mic's cutting out there a bit, buddy. Yeah, um... Interference. A bit. 
So you going for a hey, tunnel hey, or something? Hey, can, you, <laughs> hey, can you call off the Illuminati? I mean, we want to keep talking to him. We don't oh, need to shut Sorry, him um, I'll, I'll just call the order in. Uh, well, Lemon Bird's trying to sort his uh, connection out. Just just two minutes. Um, Brainy, what do you think of what's been going on so far? Um, well, I mean, Lemon Bird is trying to justify. I mean, I don't want to try to tear into him, but they could make this a three on one. And why he's trying to justify a lot of his things with just kind of like conjecture and assumptions is when he's saying we're the ones assuming, but he's making a lot of them. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. Um, Lemon Bird, are you there? And of course, I was trying to keep that a neutral comment, just because you know, yeah. I'm, you know I'm trying to be a good moderator here. Pig, do you want to see if you can get Lemon Bird back? I realize I was running something and he was talking there. Yeah, um, he did say that he was driving whilst doing this, so um, yeah, let's hope he, he has. Didn't. And life has risks. We didn't. We didn't hear shattering glass and squealing tires. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, hey, oh, I gotta pick up my phone off the road. If I can say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead, um, Fable. Yeah, I'm just looking at the side chat here. I apologize for, uh, you know, I've been kind of in the debate. Um, but if anybody has the means, please reach out. Uh, super chats are appreciated because this, everything here is going to help Craig while he's, his strike is down. And Thank very you. well, his channel's down and his channel's on strike. So please, if you can help, Please help. Yeah, go to point. Craig's. Uh, go to Craig's page. Fight the flat earth. Um, um, fight the flat earth and watch his video about the strike, and you'll understand how important this is. So please, if you can, do. Thanks for that, bud. Appreciate that. Lemon Bird, you yeah. there? He's been removed from the Discord group right now. He might. I'm working on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popping him in now. Back in. Uh, any questions from the chat then? Now, whilst uh, we're getting this sorted, um, there's been a few super chats. I kind of wanted to go over them at the end. Um, you can go over them now if you want to, Craig. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got so far. No pain, no gain is not a super chat, but he says Lemon must have went off a bridge. It, that could be possible. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't uh, using GPS. I saw that in there as well, the ground positioning system. Oh, dear. <laughs> right, so super chats. Uh, from Aphotic New Zealand, $5, says water is the same medium. It's still a gradient. Yeah, I think that's in response to the atmosphere thing, verbal. Yeah, you can do that with distilled water. Yeah, exactly. Um, next one. Uh, it wasn't a super chat, but um, the the Kits and Cavalier asked, uh, uh, can Verbal Pancake, can you show any of your astronomical photos that you've taken? Do you have them available? Uh, let me see. None of mine are really that good. Um, got a lot of Eclipse photos. Okay, maybe we could get to having a look at some of those at the end. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. Stinger News 1 says, go team cunt. Thanks, Red. Yeah, thank you, Reds, for doing this again. That, that's brilliant. Um, AJ Ravenwolf for $10 says, dot, 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 dot. Um, I think that was it was in response to Lemon Bird just blaming everything on NASA. <laughs> a lot of silence there. Yeah. Um, Alchemist says that my ears and nose are bleeding right now. Goodbye, cruel world. A tiny bit of my last will and testament in support of FTFE. Thanks, buddy. Much appreciated. Um, Craig sorry. Essex, $10, says Red's Rhetoric. Thanks for stepping up and helping FTFE. Yeah, Reds, if you are watching, I know you are. Thank you again very much. Um, Monkey Sage says that um, you've got a sexy voice. What do you think about that? <laughs> He must be talking about furball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a pure yeah. lie. Absolute lie. <laughs> uh, JC, two dollars here, Red and Craig, for all your great content. Um, Astronomy Live did a five dollar super chat, and it is towards Lemon Bird. We'll ask him when he gets back in. Um, Astronomy Live and Red Rhetoric did um, observations of the uh, ISS together, and it says explain. Red and I measuring the altitude, size, and velocity of the ISS during a lunar transit using parallax and simultaneous observations one kilometer apart. Have you seen that? Yeah. Um, Craig, give me one second. Uh, one member, can we do a mic check? And he left. Number's obviously having some communication issues. Yeah. Okay, continue on with the live chats. 
Uh, Kristen Frost uh, says he's been there for less than a minute and already has some palm oil on my face. Yeah, the face palms are strong. We should have said at the beginning of this that you're going to need some kind of face protection. Um, something ironic, $2 says FTFE is the hero his family got, not that it needs. Thank you for the Batman reference. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's all the super chats. So now, when um, Lemonbird comes back in, we'll ask him about the um, observation that Red and Astronomy Live did together. Uh, um, Furball, why don't you just show out your channel for a little bit? Tell people about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, my, my channel is basically educational. That's my goal. Um, let me go over quick. i trying to remember. I don't have a whole lot of videos. It, as funny as the terrible, terrible... Uh, videos on how terrible the flat earth is that's not really what i was up for um like i did a video on earthquakes and how they they uh, work with the ball and a lot of my videos i start out with one premise and explore it usually i'll get pulled back a little bit and find something like ah that doesn't quite match but then when i dig into it i find something else that uh confirms my original belief and adds more evidence to it um, like I, my first one on earthquakes, uh, I found an earthquake in South America and you can go to another website that's got all seismic activity across the planet. Every seismometer, they're all tied together and they don't go through NASA first. And I wanted to see how that wave propagated out. Because if you look up at my map up there, if it started in uh, South America, on this map, the last country that should have felt the shock wave would have been Australia. But it's not because on a globe, it went from here to here as it propagated out. And the one thing I didn't realize, what I didn't, uh, what I hadn't thought of, but actually I do have this. I think I do have this image. Um, I can uh, screen share. Second, I gotta find where I'm at. <laughs> No. I mean, I clearly, clearly NASA, you know, made those quakes hit yeah. when they're supposed to at the right time. So this is where the earthquake hit, and you can see these degrees out as the wave propagated. And at 100 degrees is when it started hitting Australia, but on that map, it should have been last. And the one thing I didn't think of when I was watching this, here's the entire wave from that earthquake. You can see it go out to 180 degrees, and what I didn't think about is what happens after that. And you can see from this chart, it actually comes back. And at just under 200 minutes later, that original shockwave went all the way around the Earth and came back and kept going out. They, they've done the same thing with nuclear tests. When, when the, they were doing underwater nuclear tests, uh, Soviets could detect America testing a nuke under the mm -hmm. water anywhere in the yeah, that's how they were yeah. watching and like figuring out all the stuff from North Korea and their test is by using the same method. Yeah, they now they've got the me in the activity. south. I'm watching for them. Yeah, that's funny. Um, I did some boat observation. I didn't. I've got a, a P1000 that I did tell my wife I was going to buy. Um, but I did some observations without it. Um, and here's some things that I did. So this is a ship uh five and a half kilometers away and it's not a shark in the middle of it that's the propeller on the ship no that's a shark that's and definitely I'm at, a shark <laughs> um 11 and a half meters high i go down six and a half, or six meters high and you can see the difference in perspective which is legitimate here <clears throat> you can see the background ocean there you can't and on my last shot the propeller disappeared it, it's and almost like it's hiding behind something yeah, and that's about three feet out of the water. And the Earth Curve Calculator says I should lose about a foot and a half to two feet. And then I did took this later in the day, and I love the, the glint in the, the ocean here because it really makes it stand out. And there's that shark fin again. And you can see a little bit of it still there. But it disappears. Wow. And what like, camera is this that we'll take him with? This was with a uh, Nikon D800 with a fixed uh, 300 millimeter uh, lens, but the lens is a crop lens, and I've got a full frame, the D800 is a uh, full frame, so it's actually, this is probably about 450 millimeter focal length. You cannot show me bendy water. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Any luck with um, Lemonbird? Lemon? 
could you give us a mic check? So it's still just squealing tires. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if we hear, if we hear um, like bubbles and stuff like that, then maybe it is a. Yeah, it's the uh, FBI I also and CIA. Some <laughs> Sorry, I carry also on. Did but... some observations on a plane. Um, I bought a Theodolite app again that I didn't tell my wife I paid ten dollars for. I can do a lot of things in Korea because you know she's sleeping. I don't want to wake her up. Um, <laughs> this was a flight back from South Korea to the states that I did about a month and a half ago. Uh, you can see eye level at almost five hundred feet. Horizon went down a little bit at a thousand feet. Horizon went down even more, and then at 38,000 feet, it's down a lot. And I've got a video just on this. And the, 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 these, the taking off ones, I, I did this twice from takeoff to 10,000 feet. And I filmed through my camera with this app the entirety of the takeoff. And, just and so that's that just done with your phone, yeah? Yeah, that's just done with my phone. And just an app and you, you can, can get from a, an app store. Yeah, and you could argue that, okay, this is not accurate. Or this is, it's, it's just a phone. Yeah, you're right. There are some internal components to the phone that aren't exact, but what you can also do is you can calibrate and tell your phone what level is. And I've got that on the video as well. So here when I was up at 38,000 feet, hit the calibrate button, changes screen, it tells you point at level or point at your target. I pointed at the horizon, hit the set button, and when I lifted the camera back up, horizon stayed to where I said it was, to where I lied to my phone about. And then when I reset it, it goes back to the phone's internal mechanics. It pops back here. <clears throat> wow. So it is, it's reacting to an external force, right? To, to level itself. And my wife just texted me saying that to let me know that, that she's watching. Oh, so you busted. I need to stop talking about, yeah, all the money I'm spending. <laughs> uh, the P1000 is over a $1,600 camera. Hello, future hey. mom. All right, Lemon Bird, are you there? Same. Is Lemon Bird um, even in the Discord pig? Hello. Hello? Hey. Hey, Lemon Bird, you're back. Yeah. Okay, all right. If all right Lemon... is, there, is everything okay? Uh, Yeah. You didn't crash your car? Uh, Bad connection. Right, good. As long as you didn't okay. crash your car, that's the important thing. Yep, yep um, definitely. So, oh, no, I'm good. I don't know where we where where we left off. Really, um, Fribble's just been taking us through some of his observations, which, which are quite impressive. Um, we left off on vaccinations. We're not going to talk no, about pig. vaccinations, pig. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> heavy metal toxicity might uh, fry your brain. Um, just you know, be careful. Okay, we that that's for another debate, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> But let's just pick it back up. Uh, I, I feel that it's only fair at this point. Lemonbird maybe asks Furball a couple of questions. Yeah. All right, Lemonbird, off you go. Um, what else is there? Um, could it be possible that stuff isn't disappearing over the curvature of the Earth, but could be disappearing from some sort of optical trick of the eye instead? There's a video of stuff disappearing over flat tables in much a similar way as something would disappear over a flat plane. So is it possible that there's another explanation for why stuff is disappearing behind, quote unquote, the curve? I would say, yeah, there probably is, depending on the distance and the medium you're looking through. But I don't think you can really equate a table to the distances we're talking about. What specifically would your explanation be for this alternative reason for things disappearing? Well, if you draw the angle from the eye line of the observer 180 degrees to the uh, flat plane beneath your feet, then if the angle from your eye line up or down is less than uh, the limit of angular resolution 0 0.02 degrees or less as it goes in the distance, then an object that uh, that's you know pointing out of the flat plane would appear to go behind a horizon as it goes away from the observer, would it not? No, I would say it would not because as the angular as the angular resolution gets smaller, it do, wouldn't disappear behind something. It would just be harder and harder for your eye to resolve. But why would it go behind a, something? Wouldn't it be treated as a horizon as it narrows down to a horizon line? 
that's it's narrowing down to some sort of a point. Wouldn't that point be a horizon line on a flat plane, especially with the flat plane below your feet converging up to that point also? No, it would not be because I would I would call that a vanishing point, not a horizon line. A horizon line would be where you can no longer see the ground that's in front of you. Well, I guess you could link link it to something like this. Um, in art class, we see the type of perspective that you're talking about where it vanishes to a vanishing point in all directions, but that's only if you have 50% above your eye line and 50% below your eye line. For a low observer on the ground, you don't have a 50-50 distribution on, say, a tall building or a mountain. You have something more like 95-5 or even uh, worse than that. So if you want to, you know, take the perfect distribution of 50-50, as something goes away from you, you cut the um, object down evenly from your eye line. So it would go down 50-50, 40-40, 30-30, 10 10 to 0, 0. But for um, a 95-5 um, distribution, say, if you're low to the ground, it would be something like, you know, 95 5 93 3 um, 90, 1, 1, and 90, 0. And at that point, it would appear to set bottom first as it continues to converge at your eye line, would it not? No, it wouldn't because the entire object disappears at the same rate. Your angular mm -hmm. resolution, unless a part Although of that ground, object is physically... You're not factoring in how low you are to the ground and it disappearing on a uh, fixed elevation. That would not be the behavior so expected. So you're... No, it would be the behavior you're expected unless you're trying to say that an object's angular resolution gets smaller at different rates based upon how far above the ground it is. Yes, because of your low so height, you no longer have an even distribution 50-50 like you're piercing the middle of the object with your eye line. But there's absolutely no science or mechanics behind that. The entire object disappears due to angular resolution at the same rate. The entire thing gets smaller just because of where it's at in your vision doesn't change the fact that the entire thing gets smaller at the same rate. And for it to appear to go behind something, why, then why doesn't the ground have the same issue of its uh, angular resolution getting uh, less? Uh, so that, so that you can't and, see the ground. Uh, converges up at the horizon. But the horizon dips as you go up. It doesn't dip. It goes to the video rise to the eye line of the observer. Do you want to, you uh, want do you want to show those photos video. again of the horizon yeah. dipping? Yeah, oh, yeah. Lemonberg. Um, I've, I've got a video on this. I, I welcome it you. It appears to dip behind a thickened air column. But if the air column was out of the way, you could probably see even further. Yeah, Lemonberg. Shots without I'm refraction. Gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm going to present. I'm going to ask you to look at this, and I will walk you through, and I apologize to the audience now that you're going to see this again. Um, but this is observations, again, that I made. I personally made these observations. This is not coming from NASA. This is not coming from anything else. This is a theodolite app. The theodolite app uses the internal mechanics of your phone to determine different levels, left and right, forward, back, up and down. This hey, is for both, taking off screen share within OBS for Lemon or within uh, Discord. I can see YouTube, but it's a like minute back. Okay, let me give me a second. Let me get into the call. Thank you. Crap. Uh, Bob, if I saw your comment in there, uh, flat out. Uh, he might have been hacked or something. There was a thing saying I like black penises on his uh, video posted on his channel. So we're not sure what happened to him. Yeah, I whatever it is, I genuinely like hope he's okay for, with that regards because, you know, screwing with people's channels is just a really fucking horrible thing to do. So yes. um, I might yeah, think that Flat Out Hero is a complete dunce, but I really hope that his YouTube channel is secure and he has control of it. <clears throat> See, I find it okay, hard that could even happen with the, the authenticisms but that, that they make us go through the Dexter checks and stuff. And yeah. Like, my phone tells me when somebody logs. Yeah, exactly. Right, right anyway, back to you guys. Can you see the image I'm presenting in uh, Discord? Lemonbird? Uh -oh. Uh, I, yeah, I was looking at uh, Discord. Hold on. I'm yeah, I'm screen sharing with you right now. Oh, on Discord? Yes. It's 
It's not loading for me on Discord. I don't know why. Yes, yeah, so you might have to stop the screen share on Hangouts and then do the screen share on Discord. Uh, okay. well, can we just deal with um, Lemonbird looking at YouTube? That seemed to work before. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, it's a so, few seconds behind, but it should be all right. Yeah. So this is this is a Theodolite app. Like I said, th what this does is it uses the internal mechanics of your phone to determine the you know, level of the phone. And it is meant to measure actual degrees as you're looking up and down. This is a flight I took flying back from South Korea to, to the States about um, a month and a half ago. And you can see on takeoff, it's about it's at the horizon, and I will I will give you Lemonbird. This is not exact. This is not this is not a precision instrument, but it's pretty close. And as we took off, I filmed this. I have this takeoff twice, two separate flights as I was flying home, from from takeoff to ten thousand feet, and at oh I'm clicking the wrong thing. Dang it. Got so many damn windows open. I'm clicking on YouTube to change my screens. <laughs> Shut up, pig. So, the second image, at least now I can see uh, what he's seeing. The second image is at 5,000 feet, and you can see the horizon is lower. And in the entire video, it, it gets wonky as I'm flying forward because the the internal mechanics of the phone get confused by the forward motion of the plane. It's a little weird. So you, you've got to wait till it levels out. And then when the plane dips left and right, it, it goes wonky again. So I, in the video, I'm, I'm not claiming every image is exact accurate because the plane's moving. But when it settles out, this is at 5,000 feet. And you can see the horizon is farther down. Now, I've got one at 10,000 feet that'll take a second. And just keep your eye on this. And as it switches, you'll see that from 5,000 feet to 10,000 feet, the gap from the center of that theodolite to the horizon doubles because I have doubled my height. And that's because the horizon dips as you get higher. But the horizon could dip because you're looking through a thickened air column. As you get higher, the air column that you're looking through is going to be wider too. You're going to have two things happening. You're going to be able to describe a, describe a wider angle from your eye line, which means you're going to be able to see more for longer, but you're also going to see through a thickened air column, which may uh, make the uh, horizon dip deceptively, would it not? But I'm, but I'm going up into thinner air. Wouldn't that compensate for the lower air's thicker column? No, you're still looking through a, a thicker air column regardless. It may be thinner uh, for the same unit of air, but overall it's still way thicker if you're looking through miles and miles and miles of air, refraction, dirty air, whatever. So how, I still don't understand how the thickened air column would cause something to disappear bottom up as it goes over the horizon. And let me go to my last image here. I've got another image at 38,000 feet and you can see the drastic difference. This isn't looking through thicker air column. The horizon is lower. It's physically lower. And you can angle your phone down and see the degrees of dip that you have to touch it or you have to move it to, to hit that horizon. Yeah, for like and a person on the ground, column, you might only... Mm -hmm. Thicker air column doesn't explain that. Thicker air column just means it's harder to see something. Yeah, but it would make the, um, uh, you probably get a horizon that stops short of the true horizon because of the thickness of the air column alone. So what you're, what you're claiming, what you'd have, and I want you to, to be firm on this, Lemonberg. In this image, the horizon, the, the actual horizon where I should be able to see to is the center of this image. That's where the horizon is, but due to thicker air, I can't see it. That, that would be what you're my saying. That would be my contention with refraction and all that, yes. So in this image, where the reticle is well above the visible horizon, that's actually where the Earth extends out to. So if that's the fact, then why do I see sunlight in that area? Mm, I'd say probably refraction or something. There's probably some or weird the, stuff happening light. Or the Earth is a ball. It's easier. It, I don't have to make assumptions. It's not a ball. Based, it's not a ball based off a of laser exper uh, laser um, images 
I mean, laser experiments, microwave experiments going over uh, miles and miles with hardly any uh, drop and uh, infrared that looks like it's um, a thousand miles of flat land. But Jaron himself has proven that it's a ball by his own light experiments. Jaron tried to debunk it himself. And he's proved that there was dip and that the earth curved by his own experimentation. Who? And Bob, Jared, Jaronism. Um, yeah, that happened the other day, actually. Are you referring yeah. to the uh, Beyond the, the Curve documentary? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Jared was trying to prove that if you lined up several boards long distances apart with holes cut in them at the exact same height off of the physical ground, that you could see a light through all of those holes. Yeah, but he Me, you and I talked about this in our debate, Lemonbird, and you did say that you'd look at that and, you know, come to a, a conclusion based on what you saw. Have you actually looked into what that footage was? Uh, I don't think I've seen the one from Beyond the Curve. I saw the one where um, he asked the dude to lift the thing, lift the light higher, and he could see it or something. Yeah, yeah, that was that that, that was from a doc- documentary yep. called. Beyond the curve or something, I think. Goddess Engineer covered a lot of it on his channel. But yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. the but same that that's the same been... thing that we're talking about. So I think Fribble's asking you, you know, how is that possible if the Earth is flat? Uh, probably their incompetence with the uh, instruments. They probably didn't collimate the um, uh, laser properly. This didn't and involve a laser. Spread. This involved... This involved pieces of plywood with holes drilled in it at a certain height, and the what they light. Like a laser light or something, and the uh, the light expanded or whatever off a target. How come this every time the that there's there's evidence on our side, it's it's incorrect or that they've done something wrong, but then whenever somebody makes some sort of conjecture for the flat Earth, it's apparently acceptable. That's the part I have a problem. Well, uh, you know, the the heart is desperately wicked, but on top of that, we don't see um, land angling away. We don't see movement. I have a picture of it right and, here. Um, a I land a objectively of falling. Land. I have a picture in front of you right now of land. Through That's a exactly thickened air is. column. Through a thickened so, air column with refraction more than likely. So, Lamenberg, what you're saying is we don't see land falling away. That would make me... But when you show me land falling away, it's the thickened air column, so land can't be falling away. You have an unfalsifiable narrative. Well, the thing is, it's not accompanied by um, curvature in the left-right x-axis. It's not accompanied by stuff angling away, as you would expect, on a curved surface. I'm showing it It's not accompanied by the other things that you you. for the model to be correct. You're just showing me that the horizon's lower. That could come from refraction and a thickened air column. Right, sorry. And um, I'm also showing can I, can you I just the interject sun. here? Um, Go ahead. Can you give me your definition of refraction, Lemon Bird? The, the light bends from uh, going through a thick medium of some sort. In what way? Bends off. And how? Uh, it bends toward the normal line. Uh, if it's more thick, I think it bends downward, but I, I'd have to look. Okay, right. Okay, just, just, just to be clear, you don't really know what refraction is then. What is it then? Well, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not here to answer questions. I just wanted to clarify that that it, you had an understanding of what refraction is, and I think we just got to that. Then what's refraction? If light, if it's Craig, I, I, I would like bending, to make going through a thicker medium. Then what is it? Sorry, Craig. Brainy... I would like to make one point: is yeah. that um, you'll notice that I have not made the argument of refraction. That's because I don't know the formulas for refraction to argue them. So I'm not going to make those arguments. The arguments I'm presenting are things that I have experimented with personally and things that I have examined personally. That's why with I'm not throwing out those things I don't understand. With a globe perspective, I come from a flat earth perspective, and so I have another explanation. Yeah, but I come from an evidence perspective. You're just saying uh, that, uh, that you don't believe it. the globe. Bias by the globe. You have your bias. I have mine. We'll see which one lines up uh, uh, more with reality. And that's kind of a terrible way of looking at it. I mean, you're admitting that you're Stick not going to see the other side. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's called have intellectual your, dishonesty. I have mine. Maybe we'll meet in the middle. All right. Anyway, are there we... any other areas that you'd like to talk to uh, talk about Lemonberg? Oh, we hit the main things. Um, how do you have a rainbow 
without um, the, the firmament, I guess you could say. I, I've yeah. heard the globe side say that it's water crystals, but the thing is those, those uh, not water crystals, I'm sorry, water droplets. But the thing is those water droplets would be turning in the air and you'd have like a disco ball effect. Yeah, I can the, make the a rainbow with my hose. Way down. What was that? I can make a rainbow with my hose, man. Yeah, outside, but if you try to do the same conditions inside, you need like a, a black body reflector or a mirror. I can use a spotlight. As long as you got enough light, you can make a rainbow curve. Yeah, uh, I guess the main point is with the same conditions outside, you know, you have the dome, but inside you don't have the dome, so you need a reflector or a mirror or something to, yeah, to separate the light and the beams. Right. Okay, let's see what Thurbo has to say about that. Uh, I have not researched this much, um, so I, I, I can't speak from personal experience, but I have seen videos because the claim is that you have to have the dome for the refraction to create a rainbow. So if you don't have the dome, it can't be created. The argument is that you can't create a rainbow inside of a building. And I've seen videos of people in their garage creating rainbows with the right angle of light spritzing air, uh, water into the air, and there's no dome behind that. The mirror. Uh, but there's that? a mirror. In, there's a, a reflective um, body or a mirror inside, even if it's the lens of the camera. The point is you need some sort so again, of you're polarizer false. to separate so again, the light. You, you have an unfalsifiable narrative. You have to have a dome to create. Five, but why is it that under the same conditions inside, you don't get a, a rainbow without a mirror or some sort of a black body reflector? I think we Fribble need to just said that, you, that is Le 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 Sorry, I, I think you did misheard what Fribble said there. He just said that, that you can do that without a mirror or a reflector. But he's claiming the mirror is the camera. Yeah, even I'm a little confused as to what you're saying here, Lemonbird, to be honest. It, again, it's uh, um, the video that I saw where they uh, duplicated it inside, they had the uh, lens of the camera, which could do some of the uh, uh, polarizing. And then another one, I saw some sort of reflective surface on the ground that could possibly, you know, offer reflection too. There may be other but reflectors you're that you're are being acknowledged. Be done without a dome. The dome isn't there. Uh, Your original sort of assertion. Or a mirror. So then the dome has nothing to do with it. So then what are we arguing? So is the thing doing it outside. Inside, you need something else. But you know that a it's, domed object doesn't make a proper, it's not going to make that rainbow just because the rainbow's got an arc to it. It doesn't, doesn't mean that that's magically, because because the dome has an arc to it in your imagination that, that, that suddenly the rainbow should have that shape. It, it's, it's not really that it depends on whether the object is curved that's giving off the light or if it's going through some sort of curved surface. But the um, uh, polarizer would tend to give shape to the um, to the rainbow. When you shine it through a prism, it looks kind of flat. If you shine it through a, a curved object, it would probably take on the properties of the object and be curved. So I, I think I would like to, to wrap up this assertion with, with this. That is that outside taking pictures of rainbows is because of the dome and the firmament inside taking pictures of rainbows is because of a reflection off the floor a mirror on the wall there's absolutely nothing else in the in the room then it's the mirror on the camera so it's an unfalsifiable narrative it's falsifiable on those three levels so i don't know what you're talking about but how, uh, how could it be falsified? How, how could I prove I'm check to see if that. the camera's doing the refracting, the thing on the ground's doing the refracting, or some sort of other mirror inside of the room is doing the refracting? Simple. But you realize the camera lens acts as our eye, right? I mean, that's that's why they're... We they're, have a lens on our eye, and we have a lens on the camera as well. But then you're just going back to magic. I mean, it's it's saying that we you're going to do say what Fouquet says, where you're saying we can't trust our own eyes. That's all I have a problem with. Uh, you're saying we can't trust our own eyes that says it's flat and we have to go to the scientific uh, priesthood to, to interpret our senses properly. Yeah, no, I, no I'm not even going to go there. Cause I'm, I'm yeah, done with you've that. You've no idea how much that statement just triggered me, Lemon Bird, but this isn't my debate. So, um... Yeah, I, I think that statement is along the lines of it's not even wrong. Yeah, it's so wrong, it's not even wrong. Right. Um, what, what, what I want to do is I want to 
I want to start wrapping this up. Um, uh, what I'm going to do now, we'll go over some super chats because there's a couple of questions for you guys both. And then um, you guys can have uh, like a five minute closing argument each. How's that sound? All right. So let me go to. And I was just going to say, remember everybody, we got 430 people in here. I saw your comment. You're wrong. Don't forget to throw some uh, super chats up, to get your questions answered and help. Yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, bear me one sec. Okay. Right, so this was one for you, Lemonbird, from Astronomy Live. Um, explain when Red's Rhetoric and I measured the altitude, size, and velocity of the ISS during a lunar transit using parallax and simultaneous observations one kilometer apart. Uh, no parallax. Parallax can be explained by temperature differences in the air. The parallax differences that they record are so minute, they're so subject to human error. You probably saw a pen light that was uh, shining on the underside of the dome, or a drone, or a satellite, or something else, maybe even an attachment to the underside of the dome. I can tell you right now, you just cost Red Rhetoric a lot of money because he punched his computer when you said that. <laughs> So um, I think you need to, to help out um, <laughs> Reds there. Okay, next one. Uh, Give me the car. Right. Uh, do, 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 bear with me. I'm really upset that we didn't get to talk to fly, fat, the, fight the, uh, flat out about, um, about the vapor don't. Uh, vapor yeah, don't. I will that try and... So much um, fun. If I can get hold of flat out hero, are you up for still having a go with him, BM Fribble? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I see. I've tried to, I've messaged him. Usually he responds. We talk back and forth quite often, but he hasn't responded since whatever happened to his channel. Um, yeah. 199 from, I'm sorry if I butcher this, Muyaka Kai 86. Um, I says that we should have brought a salad for all the word salad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ken Schaefer, $20. Cheers to Craig. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, Fact-based living uh, for $2 says gyros are not rigid in space. Any thoughts on that? Would Is that a, a comment on gyros or not? Is he talking about the food or the mechanical device? I'm assuming the, the mechanical mm -hmm. device, like, you know, the, I suppose the claim is that gyro, gyroscopes maintain their rigid, rigidity in 3D space and he's saying yeah. no. But, but they do, that, that's demonstrable here on Earth. And that's how, somebody actually just uh, watched a video a couple days ago that somebody's building a drone and the only thing he's using for the controls on it are um, um, not, what's the technical term for gyros? Um, the wheels that they, for satellites. Basically it's two wheels on the sides of it and changing those wheels controls the drone yeah. with no other control in, in mechanics inside. Okay. Right. Reaction, uh, reaction wheel. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, something ironic says FTFE needs integrity and right-sized Batman shirt. Um, I think that's an insult against me. And this is Superman. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just saying. <laughs> like, I know I have Batman. T I have a bat suit. You know, I mean, think about it, guys. Have you ever seen me and Batman in the same place at the same time? And that said, if they're going to make fun of the size of your shirt, I say get a tighter one. <laughs> well, you've seen my body, surely, went on Beaver's videos, right? I've been working yeah, hard right. to get He's that. Uh, $2 from uh, Auntie Flatter says, can't afford much, but Kia Ka FTFE, thank you very much. Um, oh, chicken, man. Demonic Davros, uh, 10 Australian dollars, another donation for me, thank you. Uh, Boaty McBoat Face, $6.66. Uh, hashtag Team Cunt. Yeah, thank you. Tiffany Brainer, $9.99, um, says that not only do you have a, a good voice, BM, but you, your face isn't bad either. Oh, thank you. Are you blushing? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, Ken Schaefer, $10. In appreciation of verbal service from a vet. Um... $20 from Vic Toons Entertainment says, I want to know that we're all behind you, Chad. Don't give up. I think I'm Chad. I don't know why, but thank you. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> $20 uh, from Robin Irvelina with, with no message, but thanks very much. Um, Torna, Tornagon, uh, $3.49. Keep strong FTFE. Logic and reason always wins. 
if only the flat earthers could agree to that um another five dollars from robin with no message thank you again um sweet that's heathen. a friend of mine thank you robin ah excellent sweet heathen five dollars you rock red keep up the good work ftfe yeah again thank you very much to red rhetoric for doing this um kiwi h uh two dollars how do you explain the earthquakes on flat earth lemon bird I'd go with uh, the electric universe theory of an electrical phenomenon uh, causing some sort of land reverberation. Um, I ascribe to the um, biblical flat earth model with the land on some sort of pillars. Um, so it would probably be pretty stable and sound and the land would probably go down pretty deep. Okay. So this idea of uh, tectonic plates is a little uh, ridiculous to me. So not but only have you just electrical. annoyed and broken Red's computer screen, but every seismologist watching this now needs a new computer as well. Just saying. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, I'm surprised you didn't even invoke magic. <laughs> $3.99 <laughs> from Canuck M. It's called Flat Earth Fiction for a reason. Uh, $5 from Gregory Schmidt. What the hell is this magical air column you keep talking about, Lemonbird? Um, as you go up higher, you're seeing further and further. And so say at ground level, you're only seeing a six mile air column out to the six mile vanishing point, but up high, you could probably see up to 50 miles and beyond. So you're seeing through a 50 mile air column all of a sudden. So that's probably going to mess with the visual optics. Okay. Um, can you define the air column? Uh, the uh, amount of air that you see or that you're seeing through with a direct line of sight before, um, convergence of the flat plane up to your eye line and stuff gets too narrow in your field of vision. Remember class, instead of horizon, say flat plane. <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a, uh, it's a horizon, more. not a curvizon. Well, you need to look into the entomology of the word horizon there. Um, another question for you, Lemonbird, $5 from Gregory Schmidt. Can you explain refraction? I think you covered that, but do you want to just give us your explanation again of what refraction is? Uh, light goes through, uh, going along on its way, then it hits something thicker and it bends off of its course. That's basically what refraction is. Um, if it's going through, um, you know, air that's different than the air that it came from, it may uh, bend off its course a little bit slightly and, um, you know, kind of veer off course. That's, you know, like refraction you see with uh, it, uh, light going through water, you'll see like a straw kind of split. If you look at the uh, a glass of water with a straw in it from the side, that's refraction uh, making the um, straw appear to split because the light goes through the air and hits the water and kind of bends off to the side. And the uh, the, the image of the straw and the water kind of uh, moves off to the side a little bit. That's refraction in action right there. But in the air, I guess it would be um, going through uh, a, an air column with more moisture, less moisture, that sort of thing, kind of sending the light off course a little bit. Okay. Um, the thing is, that's almost right. And I think of a bit more research, you might get there with that one. Uh, $1.99 from Miyakaku86. Again, I'm sorry if I ruined your name. What is it with the flat earth perspective? Yeah, they call that flat earth perspective. Uh, another dollar from Robin. Um, I'm sorry if I've missed any of them, guys. Bear with me two secs while I just go back. Uh, do do do. One sec. Right, okay, yeah, there we go. Next one is two dollars from Demonic Davros. Lemon, can you explain redshift without gravity? Do you know what redshift is? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's basically the Doppler effect for light. Um yeah. for sound, the Doppler effect is um you can yell out of a car. And if the car is approaching you, the, the sound waves will uh, shorten and compress and get squeezed. And that will imitate a um, higher frequency sound. So the sound's going to be high pitched. But as the car goes away from you, if you're still yelling, those same waves are going to fatten out and, and lengthen. And it's going to imitate a um, longer uh, wavelength of light and a, a, a lo longer wavelength of sound, sorry, and appear to go down in tone. With light, um, these. Uh, light emitting objects that are coming close to us, their light waves will scrunch up 
and scrunch up toward the blue spectrum of light. And so it'll be blue shifted. But if it's going away from you, it'll lengthen out and uh, shift toward the red uh, spectrum. But the thing is, how do you know if what you're viewing in space isn't just red or blue colored or whatever? As I said before, there's stuff that's red shifted that's in front of uh, blue shifted objects, basically stuff that should be further away is closer and stuff that should be closer is further away. So we don't know if we're looking at stuff that's actually shifting from movement or if it's just, you know, emitting a certain spectra at the time, if it just has a blue or red color. I mean, how are we supposed to know? The light could even be refracting by going through different media, scrunching up or, or spacing out the light from electrical phenomena. So redshift as a, a measure of how far these stars are, are uh, away, how far away these stars are may be in doubt itself. We may need to look into this a bit further. Brainy, any thoughts on that? Um, just on, I'm not uh, as well versed on the redshift stuff, so um, that's somewhere I haven't put a lot of attention into, to be honest. Sorry, I, mean, I don't have a lot of input on that. <clears throat> you, you are. I mean, your explanation of of the Doppler effect was pretty much spot on, but then, yeah, there's a lot was. of things that you aren't taking into account when you're looking at the redshift of light and things. But I'd like another debate with you at some point and go over some of these. That would be quite fun. <laughs> um, mm, I'd have to find my science a bit. <laughs> Okay, next one was from uh, 666 Sex from Brainery. Uh, Brainery. Um, thanks, guys, and thanks to Reds for lending the channel. Again, yeah, again, thank you, Reds, for letting us do this on here. $10 from Blind Artillery Observer. BM, your stat is late. Do you know what that's on about? Yeah, I do. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> um, let's see if we've got any more. I think there's one more on there. And sorry, I haven't had uh, much to input into some of these things. I'm uh, I'm enjoying kind of listening to the debate, and I've uh, you know. Well, that's again, kind of our job to be here right, to, so. to do that. You know, I think both of us have done well to hold back on a lot of occasions. It's very hard from from this side, isn't it? Well, it is. So I mean, obviously, you want to jump in. And... Sorry, what was that, love? Am I the best moderator, then? Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, look at Pig. Um, right, I think this one is for you, Chain BM. Uh, it's uh, $1.99. Why do you... Th no, sorry, this is for Furball. Um, uh, not for Furball, this is for Lemon, sorry. Why do you think that we think Newton and Einstein are gods? Um, um they're oh, pretty see. smart people. Um... And they, they came up with a very nice model, good scientists and stuff. But, you know, um, uh, I, I'm a bit of a, you know, god tard. So, you know, got to invite him back in and not make man, you know, in his science, my god. So, you know, smart dudes, but no, I, I submit it before God. Okay. All right. Um, Tony Vadelez, uh $5. So the sun is six miles away if you can't see more than six miles through the air column. Um, you would see up to a point, but from your low height, um, stuff would disappear bottom first because you only have six feet from your eye line down, but from your eye line up, you have infinite, you know, um, angles that your eyes can make. So you're going to see the top of objects much more than, uh, than you're going to see the bottom of them over the flat plane if you're too low to the ground. Furbo, any response to that? Where does he start? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> i know um I, i'm pretty sure that you would um be a hufflepuff lemon bird i don't know why you come off as a hufflepuff to me i don't know what that term oh, even means is that a british thing or is it <laughs> harry potter dude how dare oh, you it's, it's a funny. british you know what yeah. my wife would have been appalled she would have come in here and slap me <laughs> <laughs> she'd have been like what the hell you don't know what a hufflepuff is <laughs> Uh, two years 99 from Rapid X. Hey man, again, thanks for help on the song. Um, flat earthers dig in their own graves with their behavior. Yeah, they always seem to be the ones with the threats of violence and the vile nastiness. You know, I'll call people fucking idiots when they're fucking idiots, but I'm not gonna, you know, do the things Ding. that they seem to be doing to us. Ding, indeed. Uh, two dollars well, from Mr. Unite thing. for the Children. My Dixie wrecked. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jesse Zinden Brassard, one dollar ninety nine. Where's the hammer? The hammer? Yeah, know. thanks, Jess. Oh, okay. 
that's more inside. I'll, I'll tell you that story later, Craig. And that's all the super chats that we've got there. Um, guys, thank you very much for all the super chats. Um, you, uh, it's really, really appreciated. I think what we do now um, is ask you guys for kind of a closing argument. Um, Pancake went first last time. So, Furball, do you want to just wrap up for five minutes? Kind of at the end. I'm going to uh, add something at the end of the end. Of the, right, right at the end. What was that? Sorry? I said, don't just cut it off at the end. Uh, I was going to uh, add a link and stuff here at the end for people to go to. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, no worries. After. All right, yep, yeah, Furball, you want to wrap up? Yeah, um, Lemon, thank you for, for engaging. I know this was last minute. We wanted it to be a flat out hero, and I, I still really want to talk with him as well. Um, thank you for trying to stay on topic. Uh, I'm glad that it maintained being cordial. Uh, I would speak with a fellow scientist and stuff. I, I encourage you to look into some of the areas that we talked about that, that you didn't have specific answers for. Specifically, I was trying to remember uh, the motion of the space station is viewed from the ground, that it can be viewed from two different places within minutes of each other. So it, it appears to be an object moving. So I would encourage you to evaluate that or dig into your hologram theory and see if you can find evidence of it. Um, I mean, uh, I do come at this with a little bit of faith, so I will keep the flat in the back of my mind because to me it just seems so, you know, true uh, as far as I can tell. But I'll try to keep an open mind. Yeah, just just do your own research, and it it might re something might register, just like I'm doing. I, I'm doing my own research, and every little investigation I do, I find something that I wasn't expected expecting, and a lot of times some that unexpected thing is like that's not what's supposed to be happening. So I try and figure out why that was happening. And I'm usually not trying to explain it from a global perspective. I'm able to explain it from the science I'm seeing around it. So that, that's, that's what I would encourage you to do. Uh, I understand your, your faith base, your religion. Uh, I'm not coming from that perspective. So I'm not going to bash you on that. So um, glad to, to talk with you any other time. Don't want to talk about anti-vax. Don't want to talk about all that kind of other crazy stuff. Um, Oh, the rabbit so, hole is deep, my friend. It, yeah, yes, it is. Um, uh, chill for myself for a second. Uh, please, anybody who thought I did good today, come over and check out my channel. Um, I'm, I'm still new. It's only about uh, two, three months old. Um, while I'm here in Korea, I'm going to be trying to put out a video every week. So uh, once I get back home, my, my wife will probably make me slow down on that quite a bit. Um, but come check me out. If you like it, subscribe. Um, I'm not monetized. I'm not anywhere near being monetized. I'm not trying to be monetized. I'm just trying to pr provide good educational content. Um, what is this channel's name? BM Furball uh, Pancake BM Hero. Furball. Yep. The link BM will uh, probably fight can probably put the link in the description afterwards. Or yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'll get ready to do that for me. Yeah, thank you to Red for giving uh, Fight the Flat Earth his channel that very amazing of you to do that uh glad to see that we kind of came together after this terrible thing that happened uh yesterday uh thanks uh fight the flatter for hosting and brainy for moderating uh look forward to doing this kind of stuff in the future uh if you can support support please do uh and there's gonna be brady's gonna talk about this but there's gonna be an after show as well with a link in the description if anybody wants to just hang out and chat Right. Awesome. Thanks yeah, very that's, much. That's everything for me. Brilliant. Um, just before you do your wrap up, Lemon Bird got one more super chat for you um, from one nerd VS. Um, Five dollars. Where in scripture is Newton contradicted? Sorry, I'm late. Uh, Newton's uh, theory of the conservation of um, energy is a uh, uh, contradicted with uh, gravitational orbits. Anything that escapes the Earth's orbit at all would just keep flying out into space. There would be no balance. There would be no equilibrium. It's also contradicted with the sun. The sun's heat would make it an expansive force that wouldn't be able to have any gravitation at all. It would just uh, expand outward with the heat, and it wouldn't be able to pull anything in. That's uh, one of many uh, problems with uh, gravity, as far as I can tell. I probably write in an electro-gravitational -gravi model um, or rework gravity with electricity in mind. Um, gravity is probably due for an update anyway. And invite back in the ether. Oh, my goodness. Um, just so you know, I'm going to have a hangover tomorrow because of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, anyway, do you want to give us um, just a wee five-minute wrap-up of your thoughts? 
Oh, uh, uh, yes. Um, this uh, Jesuit deception has been propagated through the schools to turn us into good little atheists, good little cogs of the state that are dependent on science for uh, information like our God instead of uh, depending on the unchanging hand of the Lord our God. Um, and, um, you know, we got to join the flat earth to uh, get our, our real minds back, not the minds that are dependent on the um, atheist, materialistic, um, uh, socialist, science, scientific state that's going to turn us into cold, anti-human machines. Um, but um, join the flat earth. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, Brainy, you had some stuff you wanted to say before? We, well, uh, I mean... Out? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I just wanted to jump in. And uh, first, I want to thank the same thing everybody's done. I want to thank Red for letting us use his channel. I want to thank you, Fight, and uh, Look of Pigs in the background there. But I want to thank everybody who invited me to help do this. I hope I get another chance again in the future. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description, everybody, right now. I'll probably spam it a few times. The first one I'm dropping right now is going to be just give me a second. That is the Discord for the after show. We go in there and we, uh, Lemonbird, I think that was last night even, we were in there all piss-fitting against each other, talking about anti-vax and stuff like that. So we can go in there and have some fun with each other. Everybody can all yell at each other a little bit. We, it's actually pretty civil. Um, and then the last link I'm going to... Is self-promo. <clears throat> go subscribe to me. Yeah, And, and, and also to donate to... Make sure if you're not a patron of Fight that you uh, and you want to give them some help, you you get in on that because obviously this uh, porn bombing thing is kind of juvenile and anybody who's into that. I mean, really, just screwing with people's channels is stupid. People, people, you know, whether or not you disagree or with other people or not, you know, people like Fight are using this to help feed his family and that's just not acceptable. Lemon, what do you think of the super chat amount of six 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 sec dollars or sex dollars? Um, I'm getting my rosary and my cross right now, and um... <laughs> we we will pray for you, Lemon. We will pray. For you. He knew what he was doing too. I saw we'll that. Pray in the name of Satan. <laughs> Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. <laughs> and I actually, last thing I was going to say too is thank thank you, uh, Lemon. You know, last last minute. Uh, you know, he's. You know, we all even in the the after show there, we beat up on him before and teamed up on him and kind of like you know, set our stuff against him and he still shows up and he gets in there and he still debates. So, I mean, you got to, you got to take your hat off for a guy who's willing to throw himself into the gauntlet and, and throw down, you know? Yeah, definitely. Oh, cool. Definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks to both you guys, um, especially yeah, Lemonbird jumping in at the last moment again, you know, brilliant. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Um, oh, Rainy, no. thank you for joining me to, to moderate and host. Um, I'd like to do this more with you because I think it's quite fun. I want you to get your um, beaver latex mask. Get you on camera. Uh, yeah, it's a. Hey, I ordered it. It's um. Everybody, I got a beaver latex mask, and I'm gonna probably get a green screen at some point. I'd like to get some live streaming going on for myself. I'm over a thousand. Okay. Subs. I need. Well, see, this is the thing. It's like I was telling them last night. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a sex mask. It came from like House of Latex. It didn't, say anything about, like, <laughs> didn't say anything about having like smooth lips on it or anything. But you know, it wasn't what? There used, was, like, right? And it was. It was a fresh out the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, like. It, it, it's just a mask for when you go to faceless parties where you're <laughs> naked wearing leather. So in the future, there may be a little bit more movement on my, uh, you know, instead of just having a little beaver face, you might at times be able to see me, but, you know, not me, maybe. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, um, again, massive, massive thank you to Red for letting me use the channel. Um, yeah, porn bombing my stream, you know, like, it, it's... It's knocked my channel for six for, for for ninety days. I can't stream or anything, so I won't be getting any of the revenue. And you know that's eighty percent of the revenue you're going to make on YouTube is from streaming and stuff like that. So this is what I do. This is how I support my family now. And so when that happened, frankly, I started to freak out. So I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supported and all the super chats that are going to go to me. You know, it means a lot. Um, and right anyway i hope you enjoy, guys have enjoyed the show um join us for the discord um for the after show and um yeah we'll see you soon for another one bye bye thanks everybody bye we're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun yeah.